this is the shell of the abalone. It is an animal. Uh, there's a snail that goes in here. We all know the abalone because of its beautiful uh, coloration that is currently used in, uh, in a lot of jewelry. And this shell, it's amazing that it, it's composed of uh, uh, calcium carbonate, which is basically chalk here. And I can break the chalk. It's, it's very, very weak. And I would not be able to, to break this the harder I try. We currently use ceramic armor that is monolithic. It's, it has the same structure throughout. And uh, basically, it would be the equivalent of this. And this armor uh, against uh, armor-piercing uh, projectiles that are more and more aggressive it is primarily a, a ceramic armor. The mollusk is, uh, is a bricklayer and, and, and a quite a smart one. So the animal produces this small uh, tiles that are half a micrometer in thickness and produces them layer by layer so that these layer here, this is the first layer, and then I have, this would represent like an organic glue, a protein glue, and then the second layer would come on top here, and just like a brick layer is working with the uh, mortar and the bricks, the animal uh, is able to create this uh, self-organized pattern of bricks that grow layer by layer and produce then a laminate that is organized at the nanoscale to uh, uh, optimize this performance. We want to mimic these, uh, these methods for synthesizing with our, uh, our stronger materials. We need to understand how growth takes place if we are going to apply the similar concepts to uh, our synthetic materials like silicon carbide, alumina, uh, silicon nitride, boron nitride, boron carbide, even diamond, and then produce materials that are uh, one order of magnitude stronger than the existing ones. Uh, we are now looking into the detailed structure, the, the detailed mechanisms by which these new layers form and grow, grow laterally. We are also working with Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory using atomic force microscopy, and we were able to look for the first time into the structure of this very important protein here. This, this uh, organic uh, glue has vis viscous properties, and they slide with respect to each other, and the integrity of the material is maintained. When, when the shell, uh, for instance, here is, is struck, uh, rather than uh, the tiles breaking completely, they slide, they can slide because of we have this organic glue. Basically what we can, we can see is that, imagine that these are some of the polymer molecules comprising the, this protein. So when I pull this, rather than this breaking, it gives uh, gradually, and it gives, and then it breaks. So. One tile is attached to the, 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 to the other one by strings like this, by little springs, and then they give, so when they slide, these things are, all these, these, these polymer molecules are stretching and stretching and stretching and stretching. And, yeah, and it's only in, in, in an extreme situation that it would break apart. The, the animal then has a procedure called self-healing in which it re-fixes whatever motion has taken place and uh, over a short period so that the structure, the shell, uh, regains its, its, its initial uh, toughness. Lessons are there, and, and it's up to us to understand first uh, how these uh, organisms create these structures and then uh, how we can uh, mimic them.